Nature has an incredible way of presenting sick situations. Like for example, you take a look at rappers, actors, writers, they've always got a dope story. And uh, Paul Jubb is no different. This boy is from Hull. And somehow he has made it out of Hull to become a professional tennis player. He also won the NCAA Division One. He wants to go and win Wimbledon. So the question is, how did a boy from Yorkshire, raised by his grandma, become one of the most talked about tennis players in the whole world? Hmm, let's find out. Yes, Parley. Yes. Do you mind telling us where we are? Because right now, I have never been to a complex this beautiful until I got kicked out of university. Bro. <laughs> uh, we're at the National Tennis Centre, Roehampton. Look, you grew up in Hull. Yeah. What's that like growing up in Hull and saying, I want to play tennis? It was all right, you know, like, I mean, football, rugby are the main sports probably, but um, yeah, just going to tennis and never stopped, so. Who, was there an, an actual influence within your area? Because, so for example, I got into music because, like, the man that were doing it on the blocks, so he like, ah, I might as well get into a bit of music. Who inspired you to play tennis in the area where it is football and rugby? To be honest, it was just do, doing it as like, you know, I enjoyed it at the time. And then when I started watching tennis, like Rafa Nadal was always like my main guy growing up. So mm. you watch it a lot at home yeah. with the grandma. Yeah. And we know how important the nanny is. Yeah. How influential was she in the early stages? Yeah, I mean, big, big credit to her. Like huge, huge rock in my life. and. Um, yeah, great, great woman. So she did so much, does so much for me. So, um, yeah. What was the motivational factor for you to go, do you know what, I'm going to a whole other country? One of the coaches here, um, who I was working with at the time, you know, he was like, I think this could be like the best path for you to go into professional. You know, at the time it wasn't, you know, really an option like financially and stuff to stay here, play full time and, you know, it's obviously such an expensive sport and mm -hmm. getting a scholarship in the States was kind of the best option for me um, to play more and progress myself for a few more years to then go into the pros and he said this this is probably the best option for you and I was like great let's do it and literally a few months later I was there so I was, as soon as I heard that I was like that's the next step. Adjustment wise now because little things are different what was that like for an adjustment for a young man? Um, I get like where I was South Carolina is you know, southern people and things like that. They're so happy over there. Like, Serious? Yeah, 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 like, just random is like on the street, just smiling, saying, how are you? Like, where's normally here? Strangers? Just, like, do your own thing, you know? Strangers are saying, how are you? Yeah, just like, so friendly, which is a bit different, but, no, it was good, like, just a nice little switch up. How about the music? Did you ever pick up any new tunes over there? Because now you're Southern Hospitality. I'm thinking ludicrous. What was you picking up over there? I just got more into American hip hop, a lot more. Like, before I left, I was listening to a lot of UK stuff. Just, yeah. But then, since I've been over there, a lot more US, US vibes. Migos dropped today, big man. I'm just saying. Kevin Gates for me. Serious? Yeah, Kevin Gates. Three oh. artists, Kevin Gates. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start listening to him then. My, my top three overall, I'd say, like, Kevin Gates. Mm. Um, can I combine the two, like, UK and? Yeah, there's no rules. I'll speak. Abra. Abra, yeah, from the yeah, ends. Yeah. My G. Uh, and... Fredo, probably. Fredo? Yeah. My dream now, I've literally just had it this moment. We have to get drilled into Wimbledon. When is the last time you saw the man them taking poses like this? Never. <laughs> Next to the tent. I'm seeing it in my Never. mind right now. Never. We're going to get you to be the gatekeeper for drill in Wimbledon. Is that okay, Gaffer? I like that. Look at the white t-shirt. He's ready for it, man. Come on, fam. I like that. The process in pool becoming a top athlete was quite difficult. Made easier by some eye-catching performances as a South Carolina Gamecock. And if you do a little history, you will know that's a place where a lot of top athletes have come from, from wrestling to now tennis as well. But with a year complicated by a global pandemic, he does not look back at it with any regret. Because it's mad, I think a lot of sports, or well, a lot of sports that I love are very team oriented. So I play centre back, so if there's any problems, blame it on the right back, yeah. you can play. How difficult is it knowing you're playing tennis? It's all down to you. All the pressure is down to you. Does it sometimes get to you a little bit? That's why it kind of drew me to the sport even more because I played football when I was younger and I kind of prefer the individual side of things, you know. You've got yourself to look in the mirror for doing bad, for doing good. So because it's all down to you, you have yourself to rely on, you have yourself to praise. So I think that's the main element why I kind of chose tennis in the end. So you need a, a proper strong mindset. 
it reminds me of like a football manager, so much responsibility on you. Do you look at some of the greats, the Nadals of the past, the Federers of the past? Do you ever watch interviews or how do you stay focused? How do you stay inspired? Uh, I think I've always been like a self-driven person, so that's never been kind of an issue for me. And I'd like to think I've always like kind of had a good head on my head on my shoulders. So um, yeah, for me, I've always been you know, self-driven, determined to, to get better and keep getting, you know, working hard to get to where I need to go, so. Um, but obviously, looking at those guys are obviously a great inspiration to how to handle yourself and kind of, you know, what to do to get there, so. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, big man, but right here it says your mentor is man like Andy Murray. That's a real rude boy. Yeah. Them man there are crazy. I love watching Andy Murray, more or less off the car. I like watching his videos and stuff like that. He makes me really <clears> laugh quite a bit. His interviews are very interesting. Yeah. What's he like to be around? Nah, he's a great guy and, you know, a lot of people who don't know him, you know, might might think he's, you know, kind of mean and things like that. You only see what he does on court and, you know, have negative opinions on him. But when you get to know him and, you know, see him up close, he's honestly a really good guy, really friendly, super interested in how, you know, other people are doing, you know, he's not self-centered at all so having a legend like that in your corner is obviously such a bonus so I'm very very grateful to have his support and you know hopefully you know can continue that relationship and he can help me some more throughout the, the years to come. Clearly it's you know something you're very very passionate about I'd love to know what do you feel like you can offer the world of tennis as a you know as a unique selling point because I love the fact that you are a character I love the fact that you say I like passion and things that maybe is not associated to a sport which I associate with, you know, a middle-class lifestyle, quite, yeah. like you said, level-headed, and you're going to come in and you're going to show the passion, you're going to show aspects of it that people are not too familiar with. What other things do you feel like you will offer the world of tennis? Uh, just, just realness, you know, just who I, you know, just being who I am. Um, people seeing, you know, where I've come from, kind of, you know, just that aspect, you know, mm. realising, yeah, you can think, you know, things are possible, even if it, you know, they look kind of impossible or tough from the start. Um, just showing, you know, if you obviously keep working hard and you have that driven mindset, you know, it's all possible and kind of just that realism, you know, so. Well, Paul, the only thing that's left for me to say is thank you for your time. No, thank you. And can you show me around the complex? I'm looking to take at least that room over there. Yeah. See look at TV <coughs> and PlayStation 5, so should we go over there now. Mm -hmm. But Let's keep the it. social distance because COVID and bear yeah.